apotognathia refers to. Now this word apotognathia, when you break it down, okay, apoto means gap or an opening, okay, like the aperture of a camera lens. And nathia or nathic means something related to the jaws okay so technically this term refers to an opening between the jaws or a gap that is seen between the jaws so this indicates a skeletal type of an open bite okay so from our options we have been given open bite lower incisor crowding close bite or cross bite so the most apt or the correct answer would be an open bite but had there been an option between a dental open bite or a skeletal open bite, then the more correct answer would have been a skeletal open bite. Okay, now what are the differences between a skeletal open bite and a dental open bite and how will you identify this? Right, so there are some clinical features which you need to know regarding skeletal open bite. Now firstly, it has been reported that skeletal open bites develop because there is excessive vertical growth excessive vertical growth that is taking place in the dentoalveolar complex especially in the posterior area so when the posterior growth is greater than the anterior growth okay there is going to be a downward rotation of the mandible there is going there is going to be increase in the vertical height or the vertical proportions of the patient so here when there is increased growth in the posterior vertical area then there is going to be an open bite okay mandible is going to rotate down now this is going to continue to grow so they are going to interdigitate the posterior teeth are going to be in occlusion however the anterior teeth there is going to be an open bite that is seen or there is going to be a non-occlusion okay so what are some of the clinical features that are seen in a skeletal open bite so the first thing you will see is that the patient has excessive uh, facial height so there is an increase facial height okay or a long face syndrome there is an increased facial height okay there will be lip incompetence so here you will see that the patient at rest the lips are not touching so there will be lip incompetence if the patient tries to close forcefully there will be lip strain okay and most importantly there is going to be increased mandibular plane angle right because the mandible is rotating downward and backward so because of this because the mandible is rotating downward and backward there is going to be a class 2 type of a malocclusion because of mandibular deficiency so mandible is rotated downward and backward so it becomes less prominent okay so this develops into a class 2 uh, type of malocclusion with retrognathic mandible or a deficient mandible okay and what will be the intraoral features for this patient so what we will see intraorally okay is that there is this open bite which is diffused extending till the posterior region so if it was a dental open bite we will see some amount of uh, occlusion that is there in the posterior region but here you see this is a diffuse kind of uh, open bite only the posteriors are in contact up until the anteriors they are not in contact right also the lower anteriors are going to show some amount of crowding there's going to be a narrow maxillary arch so a narrow maxillary so this could be associated with habits like mouth breathing because there is incompetence of the lip okay so that again is going to uh, cause a narrow maxilla because of the pressures from the cheeks okay there's going to be narrow maxilla and because the mandible is rotated downwards and backwards there's also going to be crowding that is going to be seen in the lower arch crowding of lower incisors okay and also because the maxilla is narrow there might be a tendency for posterior cross bite okay but the open bite the lower incisor crowding, narrow maxillary arch and tendency towards a posterior cross bite are some of the features that are seen in skeletal open bite. Now how will you differentiate it from a dental open bite? So in a dental open bite, the, uh, the physical features or the facial features will not be as prominent as this where there is going to be an uh, increase in uh, facial height or there is going to be increased mandibular plane angle or there is going to be lip incompetence. So all of these features may not be seen because it is not a skeletal uh, open bite, it is a dental open bite. 
so what we would rather see is this a similar a picture similar to this so this is what we see in a skeletal open bite in a skeletal open bite the open bite is more v shaped okay it's diffuse only the posteriors are in occlusion and up until the premolars there might be some amount of interdigitation or they might be open okay so this is what you see in a skeletal open bite because of increased vertical growth but in a dental open bite which may be because of habits like tongue thrusting or other habits like thumb sucking etc what we see is more of intrusion of the incisors okay which is causing an open bite so we see a more y shape so here you see this is all occluding okay and then when it comes to the anterior region it's kind of opening up so this is more y shaped this is v shaped and this is more y shaped okay so when you see this you can uh, identify the differences between a skeletal open bite and a dental open bite so all the characteristic features that we saw in the occlusal features as well as the facial features of a skeletal open bite are not going to be seen in a dental open bite so the dental open bite is easier to treat because we know that it is because of some habit so elimination of the habit and also extrusion of these incisors can bring about correction of the open bite but in a skeletal open bite the treatment is much more complicated